decision's great. Now visits great job not letting the best player beat you. This one crushed. Out to right field. Seventh pick of the 2023 MLB Draft, the Detroit Tigers select Kevin McGonigal, a shortstop from Monsignor Bonner High School, Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Two balls, two strikes to Bryce Harper. Suarez delivers, swing and a drive, left field, it's deep, it's going, yes! and it is gone! Yes! yes! It is Bedlam at the bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on are you kidding me? Oh, his 10th career home run in the postseason. And he may never hit a bigger one. What is up, Delaware County? And welcome back for episode number 48 of Delco Baseball Now. My name is Brennan Ricciardi, joined as always by Ben Thorpe here at INR Studios in Garnet Valley, Pennsylvania. And we got a warm Saturday afternoon here. I'm starting oh, yeah. to get the baseball juices flowing a little bit. Loving it. Old sun's out. I feel like we've had a couple like warm Saturdays where it's we're getting there. Yeah, it's and like, it goes to like 20 the next day, yeah, and then yeah. we're just like right back to uh, the drawing board. I think the problem isn't as much the cold; is that it's hard to get on the field when the snow comes. Yeah, because even when the snow's gone, it's still muddy and just I, a nightmare. I gotta think we we've had our last snowfall though. I, I hope. I hope. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's this has been recorded like we said Saturday afternoon, uh, February 24th. So. We have, uh, we have some updates around the college baseball world. I think at some point we might start recording on Sundays so we can get like the full college baseball weekend in and go from there. But for right now, we're going to uh, to keep it rolling on Saturdays. Yes, sir. we got a good show today. we got the boys from Heriton coming in. We answered the age-old question, is Heriton Delco? Yep. Is it Delco baseball? I don't know. I guess you'll have to, to stay around and find out. Uh, we also are still in the, uh, in the process of finding sponsors. So we're, we're making some sponsorship packages. We have a lot of different things to offer, whether it be ad space, whether it be uh, podcasts like ad reads or something that can be read by us. Yeah. If you trust us to read, that's, you know, yeah, we'll, debatable. Uh, we'll only mess up a couple words. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not live, so we can uh, we can pre-record also, it if, yeah. if we have to. Uh, we can also do, you know, ads sent in by you know, the companies as well, whether that be video or just an audio ad that we could put in. We also are doing stuff for whether it be the player of the week, mm-hmm. you know, the game of the week. The power rankings, stuff like that. So a lot of uh, a lot of assets. Yeah, that's what we'll throw out. Was becoming maybe like our secondary slogan. We can easily be bought. Easily be bought. Easily be bought. Easily. Yeah. I mean, when the Haverford School brought in a T-shirt to me, I'm like, oh, I can easily be yep, bribed. Yep. You know. Easy. Um, but with that being said, we also want to give a shout out to the Quick Merchandise Store online. I had a hoodie on uh, last night, but I figured, you know, my only career playoff win in baseball was against Herriton. So I had to wear the Strathaven sweatshirt just to, you know, yeah. just to, just Rub to feel something bit, yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, as we uh, were talking about before the interview, Jonah Frankel was like undefeated for his life mm-hmm. against us. And like the one time we played him in the playoffs, it, it went our way, thankfully. But, uh, you know, get ready for some, probably some cold high school games. There's going to be some cold yeah, games. It's going to be chilly. There always are. So we got cold weather gear on there. We got warm weather gear for the summer as well. Uh, it, what would you say is your favorite item that you don't have yet from there? That I don't have? Yeah. Um, the shot glass is pretty yeah. cool. I like, I'm go, I'm going to get the shot well, glass. My parents have been asking, apparently, uh, this site, you can do this. You can make an Apple Watch band, and, and they're pretty popular, the huh, Apple Watches. Okay. So I think that could be something we could yeah. add on there. And uh, Also, the jackets are solid. But yeah. I feel like that's the popular pick, so I, I try to try to go out. The bomber there. jacket should be here soon. Yeah. The puffer jacket, I didn't get one just because I'm, I'm hoping it's not puffy jacket cold during the season. Yeah. I would imagine that we should be all right there. But, yeah, I would say the... Uh, the 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 bomber jacket that I'm getting soon, I'm very very excited about. Sweet. All right, well, without further ado, here we're going to get into this interview here with Herodin. We also got some college baseball updates from our Delco guys. We got some some Phillies and MLB season preview because uh, Phillies first spring training game is going on as we speak right now, and we figured once the high school season starts, we're going to really spend more time yeah. on that. So it, it made more sense to. Just to get our all of our Phillies and MLB stuff. We got our award picks for both the Phillies and for the rest of the league. I got my my playoff picks here, my World Series same, matchup same. set up. So uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, let's welcome on from the Herriton Rams. We got Jack Uffberg, Ross Brotherston, and Rob Philippone. 
All right, we are now joined by our guys from the Hareton Rams baseball team. We got Jack Uffberg, Ross Brotherston, and Rob Philippone. Je- gentlemen, welcome to the program. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 Yeah, thank you for having us. Of course. We got to get a very important question off early. Do you guys consider Hareton Delco? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like, what is it geographically? Because, like, I feel like it's it's kind of, it's in, like, it's Bryn Mawr, technically, right? Yeah. 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 Which I think has, like, three different counties all throughout it. Yeah, it's... I'm trying to think because I think like some of it down in there is like Philly, and then there's like it's like Delco, and then it's probably a little Monco too, know. right? Yeah. Or I don't consider it Delco at all. No, no. Yeah. Wow. We let's embrace debate here. Yeah, you that know, was the reason is it kind of falls under the umbrella is like in the Central League, like when when you have a league with twelve teams and nine of them like are a hundred percent officially Delco, you kind of like you have to consider a part of it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. for sports, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely yeah. for sports. Definitely for sports. I got to be completely honest. I thought every team in the Central League was Delco until, like, the summer. Really? Was, okay. Conestoga is definitely not. I don't think – I guess Lower Marion's like, close to you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah we're, we're in, like, the same exact township. It's just split up. Yeah. All right, so we're going we're gonna to say Delco just for the sake of, uh, yeah. of everything it's close here. enough to count. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I was simple-minded enough for, like, I saw the Carpenter Cup jersey say Delco. And that's yeah. players. You know what? That's a good that's point. A, okay, that's yeah. But that's a good that thing we're gonna base it. off yeah, it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a good point. All right. Um we got an exciting year coming up for you guys. Uh just talk about how you've been getting ready for it and the preparation you've been doing. Uh for the most part it's been like individual or like we set it up just because the school rules. We've been starting like Saturday morning practices as we start to get in, but now like we're hitting after school. We're meeting up just to get throwing in. And me personally, I've been lifting over at Ascent and getting my work in there. But it's just been slowly, like, grouping back together just to get ready for the season. Yeah. What about you guys, like, individual-wise? Um, I know a lot of kids at our school go to different, um, like, gyms and stuff. Um, I personally go to the school gym. I know Robbie goes there a lot. Um, mm-hmm. He goes to Planet Fitness, too. But um, everyone gets their work in, whether they're, you know, by themselves or with each other. Um We've been having practices for a while now for like our forty forty team, which is like our tra- like our tournament team that goes throughout the winter um, at Steelyard Sports. I'm sure you know where that is um, since December, so that's been good too. I know that this season we've placed like an extra emphasis on hitting the gym and conditioning, which is something we did different than in the past. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, so we're gonna, we'll start off with last year. I was watching this game on Game Changer. I just couldn't get out there. But that playoff game against Phoenixville, was that not, like, the nuttiest game you've ever played in? That was nuts. Insane. Yeah. I mean, we were watching. It was like you hit, wasn't like an inside the park grand slam yeah. in the top of the inning. Yeah, well, it was technically a trip. I call it a home run. Game Changer like, calls it a home run. Yeah, we'll go, like, yeah, we'll go by Game Changer. But, yeah, there was an error. But that was electric. Um you know, that was the highest point of the game for us, for sure. And then they just responded with a grand slam right in the bottom of the yeah. inning. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Um, so how do you think, like, kind of ex- that playoff experience playing that game is going to help you guys out this year? Um, our, like, last moment that I really remember from the season is Finn Lamb saying that that moment where Ross hit, we'll call it a grand slam. When Ross hit that grand slam, that was, like, one of the best moments of his baseball career. And just to, for us to chase that, as we go into the next season and the work that we put in should be to grab that feeling again. And so that's really like that. That was a really cool feeling and it lasted two innings and then it sort of slow went down. So we want to be able to like maintain that and grab that and just keep going for the seniors last year. That was their first playoff appearance ever. Um, and it, it, it kind of showed, you know, everyone was nervous. Um, Finland was our you know best pitcher throughout the whole year. He, you know, he struggled for, you know, the inning he pitched, you know. Um, and I feel like that experience for us junior, or we were juniors at the time, um, is really great for um, this season. So we're prepared. We already know how that feeling feels. And we're, like Jack said, we're chasing it again. I know that, like, that mentality in that game was, like, so electric. Like, we were so excited, but at the same time, so locked in. So if we can, like, bring that to this season, I think it's going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard because you have all like that, you know, anxiety built up and it's about how you kind of like kind of channel it because, you know, it, it is different. Like when you get there, like you can say everything you want, like, oh, it's just a game. But like you, you kind of feel it a little bit. But now you know what that feeling is like going into next year. Yeah. And I mean, I wouldn't say that that was like our only experience. We rattled off five wins to get to that point. Also, yeah, and it feels That's like playoff games. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so we knew like. We had Marple in what was pretty much a playoff game for our last game of the year. So it was sort of like we got that comfort and we were like, all right, these are our playoffs now. So by the time we got to that Phoenixville, it was just a different team that we hadn't played yet, 
but it was that same mentality of like, all right, we need to attack. That's a good point. Yeah, um, all right, so outside of you guys, who are some guys on the Herodon team this year that the world needs to know about? I would say for sure Charlie Belli. Um, he's a junior. He reclassed. This is his last year in public school for baseball due to like eligibility. Um, so him, I would say Bryce Siegel. Mm-hmm. It was a big player last year at the walk off home run. In, uh, I don't remember who we played. Walk off grand slam. Was it a grand slam? Yeah, against too? Haverford. Yeah, um, first varsity hit too. I didn't know. That. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Second varsity yeah. AB. He had he had Cade, Jordan Pearl, who was at third for us, got hurt diving for what was still a ridiculous play that I'm. I don't know how he made. And then he comes in, and makes like a play at third. He's playing for a few innings. You could tell like he got in there. He's like he like he knew he he belonged as a varsity player, but he had so many older kids. He gets in the box for that first AB. And strikes out, and then you're just like, all right, bases loaded, nobody out. Just put a good swing, get some confidence, and he just demolished the ball. Wow. That's a cr- I didn't that know. I did not know that was his nice. first game. So yeah. was he on? So he was on JV, then got brought up, or yeah, because yeah. it was, it was, it was early. Game. It was fairly early in the season, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just like I don't think it was mid season. Yeah. I don't think there was a JV game that day, so it was a bit more of like a packed uh, bench. Yeah. yeah. So another guy I would add on to that is Declan Wayman, because. In the game that Bryce hit the walk-off uh, grand slam, and he also had a home run. And one of the things that he brings to the table is that his approach to the plate is really just hit line drives, not to smack the ball, you know, over the fence every time. And I think that's one of the aspects of why we were successful last season. Well, it's funny we, you know, we've had him write for us uh, a couple times last year. Uh, so the better he does, the better it looks for the brand. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're, we're we're rooting for him. Uh, I think he told me he wants to play club at West Virginia. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Which yeah. another another good. D2 program. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, Declan's, like, got that grit the same. Like, Mick Brunelli, he, the unofficial stolen uh, base <laughs> record for the Central League with 31. Just, he he gets after it. He, I think he had, like, three plate appearances, but every time Dashiell, our catcher last year, got on base, Mick would get on, steal second and third, and suddenly it's just, like, it's scary for the other team to have him out there yeah. because it's immediately a guy in scoring position. I mean, he just... Yeah, 31, 31 stolen bases. How many bases. did you guys play last year? How I think 16, 16 17. Yeah. yeah. So that's it's like two a game. That's right. Like a little, yeah. little on the two a game. Yeah, no, that's insane. And, uh, you know, it's just like... The, the 31 is impressive, but the never getting caught is yeah. probably more impressive. Yeah, 31, wow. 31 is that's ridiculous. nuts. Yeah. yeah, he's the definition of a guy that like knows how to play his role. Like He knows what role he has, and he does it very well. Got to buy in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. We de- you guys definitely have a lot of returning guys. Obviously lost some guys, but you know it, it seems like this is a group that you can kind of, in a sense, like almost run it back with. Is that kind of like how you feel about you know this core still being together? Yeah, I personally feel like um, you know this is our second chance for us juniors, and we're, you know, we're leading. We're really leading, like, practices and, um, you know, starting our own practices um, just so, like, the younger guys understand, like, hey, we got to get to work. And, you know, this is what we're chasing for the season. Is it hard taking over that leadership role now? Because I know some people aren't always, like, vocal leaders, but, like, now that that senior class is gone, do you feel like it's kind of, you know, you know, I don't even know how to phrase it, just, like, a, it's a new thing for some of you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe not hard just because, like, I've still played with these kids for six-plus years. But it's sort of like you understand that the accountability aspect is out of love and like chasing the same goal. But you had nine seniors last year who graduated and they filled those. And so now it's sort of like who grabs this? Some kids who were JV last year, they might be like, what are they doing trying to tell them what to do? Like they like an ego thing. But really, it's just everyone's chasing that goal and everyone's trying to figure out where they belong. And it's definitely like an awkward process, but that's sort of what these practices before the season, before tryouts have gone us yeah, ready and it, for. And it's also one of the things where sometimes it's not even until the season starts that you really realize, like, people, you know, someone starts to get confidence playing on the field, and they realize, like, hey, people will listen to me if I say something, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I guess speaking of leadership, uh, your guys' coach, uh, Scott Krasinski, he's been around for a while, I mean, as long as – most centrally, or I guess as long as any central league coach. Uh, what do you guys have to say about him as a coach? I'd say that um, he really emphasizes like the idea of like buying in. I know a lot of coaches say that, um, but really, if you if you really buy in and do what he is teaching, um, we we just become successful. That's what happened last year. Um, you know, the beginning of the season was rough for us, um, and a lot of guys were all over the place, but. In the end, we all bought into what he was saying. and 
I have a lot of respect for him. One thing I like to say about K is that like, he likes to have a good time, have fun, but at the same time, he likes to get business done. And I know something he's doing differently this year is that he kind of expects his seniors to be leaders, pretty much. He's like, I feel like a little bit hands-off now, at least preseason, and kind of wants us to fall into those leadership roles like you guys are talking about. I like that. I like that. Yeah, That's definitely. good. Um, I mean, before the season, you like, I mean, before the, like, we started, we were talking about how long he was there. He knows what works in the Central League, and as a baseball coach, and it's not just like baseball. I had the opportunity as like I was a PO, so I wasn't in a lot. I I would hear him talking the way he would think about things, and so he would know coaches' signs and what they're doing because he's been so involved. And it also let me see like it's not just baseball for him. He enjoys being a coach for us and seeing us grow throughout because it's just a family aspect that he brings instead of staying on just play baseball. Yeah, That's awesome. you just have to adapt on the guys you have. You know, sometimes you have a, a group full of vocal leaders and say they, they do the job for me, but sometimes it's like a group where they're a little more soft-spoken and that, that leadership part kind of falls on you. So, and that's, you know, it's like being there that long, you start to pick up on those things. Uh, speaking of the Central League, one of the questions we had here was just talk about who, you know, based on last year, based on the guys coming back, what other teams you think are going to be good this year? I mean, Strathaven, as someone who, like, works at Ascent, I see them... I see their whole starting lineup, like all varsity and JV kids working out there every day. And for me, like, I know they're working. There's a small, there's a small part of, like, seeing people work, too, where it's like, like, it would be, like, it's, like, they're really working hard. And so, like, we always, it's always a close game with them. It's always fun. And so they're, like, the main team that, like, yeah. I would say. Underrated rivalry, because I went to Strathaven, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and every time we played them, it was just, like, it was great pitching, great defense, clutch hits, and, like, I feel like we never like blow each other out. They're always yeah. just like you know frustrating games, yeah. Yeah. and that comes with having two coaches that have been there for so long. They know like how each other you know operates and stuff. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, Strathaven. Obviously, we were talking about Marble before the show. Any like any little sleeper teams? Um, I'm not sure how much of a sleeper LM is, but um, you know they've got a lot of really good players. Um, it was a close game with us last year too. We had a walk off against them. I think the last two seasons they've been. Close wins for yes. us. Yeah, both times. Would you consider that your top rival, even though you only play them one time? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I figured just, you know, just due to the location. Yeah. But when you play t other teams twice, I wasn't sure if it changed, you know, like how, you, how you viewed that. No, just because, like, they're in, like, the same township as us. They've always been, like, our, our rival. I know Battle, Battle of Narberth. I know they have Radner, Blair. too. Yeah. Like, Radner's another rival. But for us, yeah, it's mainly on. Yeah. Not. So if you guys are in the same township. Did you, like, grow up playing, like, Little League and stuff with, like, yeah, lower the American yeah. kids? Yeah. 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 What was your Little League? Little Man. Oh, wow. Sorry. I, actually, I did not know it was called yeah, that. No. So you guys, like, split up. and So yeah. you went along the same Little League and split up. Yeah. yeah, like... Oh, wow. I had okay. like, I was actually talking to a buddy who, like, doesn't play sports now, but, like, he was like, yeah, that was, like, my prime, like, in sports. <laughs> and he was, like, listing off kids, and it was just sort of, like, you would list... Yeah, it was, like, me, Van, uh, Makai was on the team. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, like, just totally, like, split... And so sort of yeah, that's that's like, funny because it's kind of the the opposite of Marple, where the Marple guys said that they all played in Little League against each other, like Newtown, Edgemont, Marple, South Marple, whatever. So they all grew up playing against each other and hating each other. And now you guys are kind of the opposite of that. I think it's like the opposite, yeah. like most school districts, like they have a bunch, and now it's like this one's like I, it's like a, kind of a unique rivalry. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. I played travel ball with a lot of LM guys, um, and I actually live like three blocks from actually like LM school, so I'm like really close to. The, are you closer to there than Harrington? Oh, way closer. How'd you end up there? <laughs> well, it's weird because you can choose to go to Harrington. I did not know that. Huh. I did not know you had any choice. I thought yeah. it was just like where you were zoned. Oh, no, you could choose. Um, but um, some people have to go to Harrington because if they live really close to Harrington. Um, okay. That is bizarre. I did yeah, not know uh, you could yeah. elect to go uh, to one okay. or the other. Yeah. So why'd you choose Harrington then? Um, mainly because of baseball. Also because of um, a lot of my friends in the middle school went to Harrington. Oh, cool. We're going okay. to Harrington, so... Is that Bal Kenwood? Is that the middle school uh, for you guys? Welsh Valley. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, all right, so we talked about a little bit that the senior class last year had never played in an actual playoff game. Um, the last Harrington playoff win was 2019. They took down Pencrest. I guess you guys would be in middle school at that point, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, what would it mean to be able to snap that streak and add a playoff win to the resume? Everything. I mean, like one win wouldn't be enough for us, obviously. Good answer. Good I answer. like that. Last year... We were, we beat LM and we had sort of already had that feeling after my sophomore year, so we were sort of like, okay, great, we beat LM in our career, but that's not really like 
it's not a successful season if you win one game all year and it's LM. So one playoff game would be cool, but we've already been to a playoff game. In our mind, we've won them as we led up to that. So it would be it would be the whole run. It wouldn't just be one game. Yeah, that's the end goal too. I mean, last year the, the whole big goal, you know, at the end of the season was just to make it. And we won four of the last five games to do that. Um, you know, we really wanted to win, but at, in the end we were happy with what we did. Um, and this year we're trying to come back and do more, so... And I feel like especially with the ability to go pretty deep in the playoffs, it's like we should be content just getting into the playoffs and maybe winning just one game, when in reality we can win so many games. Yeah, no, that's a good point because, like, you know, there are years where it's it's okay to just say, like, making the playoffs is a success, but it's about how you respond, like, the next year because if you keep that same standard, then, you know, the bar's never going to raise, right? Yeah, yeah. trying to keep building. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about college baseball here. So, Jack, you were committed to Muhlenberg. You're going to be a Centennial Conference guy. Just talk about the recruiting process, how you ended up there, what you liked about it and all that. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of help from travel ball, like with Coach Miller to send and playing for that team. I sort of had a weird aspect just as a sidearm guy. Some schools were sort of like they needed a guy throwing 88. So the one school I'd say is like St. Peter's. Just there's a reason that they're bad is because they're like <laughs> – all right, we need guys throwing 88 or above when they're not good. And so, like, for me, I'm throwing 82 as a sidearm, and I can tell you that most pitchers on that roster are, like... They just chase, like, yeah, variables and they numbers. They chase and numbers yeah. that aren't there, and so you have to actually go out and see it. And so I was lucky enough. I talked to a lot of coaches throughout the process. I found a spot that was, like, I would say perfect for me. I actually reached out first and said, like, hey, I'll be pitching here. We sent over some information, like some TrackMan data. They said, we'd love to see you. They came to one or two, and it was perfect. But, yeah, it was definitely I, – I was definitely blessed with a lot of, like, schools reaching out. But if they weren't the right fit, it just didn't really feel right yeah. to even, like, consider them, you know? Absolutely. Uh, I owe you an apology because I forgot to make a graphic for you. I, I saw you know, – there was one time you liked a tweet, and I saw it popped up, and I saw Muhlenberg commit, and I, I completely missed – when you committed, I think I got one for you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I need to apologize on air to all the great people <laughs> of Delaware County about that one. I hope this makes up for it. It does. Uh, Ross, you're heading to um, Case Western Reserve. That's in Ohio, yeah, right? Yeah. Is it's it near in, like a big city? Or? It's in Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. okay. So um, you'll be close to like a, a town or like a city. Yeah, you know? well, it's kind of the outskirts, which I like. I don't want to be right directly in the city. Yeah. But, um, if you want to go in, you can. Yeah, yeah. of course, of course. Um, so like my process um, really started with going to this showcase called Head First Honor Roll. It's in, um, it's on Long Island. Probably the best showcase, if like I could like, rec like tell someone to go to, I would say like go to that one for sure. You talk to all the coaches there, like, you know, they, they like really get into like who you are like as a person um, at the showcase. So that's where I met the coach. Um, and I did really good at the showcase and, you know, visited twice and I was like, yeah, this is a place for me. That's a showcase where it's all like very high academic schools, yeah. right? I remember it's like somewhere like the Ivy Leagues will be there. Neither no, it's us for what's up? <laughs> Neither of us for no, no. I was head, pro <laughs> head probably third. I would say, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so Rob, I'll be honest. I don't know where you're going to school. Have you committed anywhere yet? Are you planning on playing in college? What's going on? I'm probably not going to play baseball in college. I might do club. I don't know yet. I would recommend it. Yeah. I'm not going to probably go for like school baseball. Yeah. No, that's good. You can find a school where, especially you know, if you end up not wanting to play club, you'll still be happy. Yeah. Uh, it's my, my scheduled reminder. I played club for Penn State, so I'm always trying to recruit. Uh, so if you if you want to play club, I would definitely consider it. But have you looked at any schools specifically? I'm leaning to Villanova right now. They have a club just, team. Like, just as everything I want to school, pretty much. Yeah, they actually they have a good club team. They were they were D two, and they actually we played a series with them non conference, and they took a game from us. They were they're a good D two team. Shout out Henry. <laughs> Henry Dawes, yeah, shout out Henry Dawes. Um, all right, so what are you guys most excited about upcoming season here? Just baseball, man. Like you go through the whole winter, it's cold. Obviously, you're working out, but you it's towards a goal. And finally, you got to be, like, back on the field with your guys. Like, that's all you can ask for. Yeah. Um, me personally, I remember when I was a freshman, and the seniors at that time were like, yeah, it goes by quick. It really does, though. Um, I'm just excited to cherish every moment. It's the last season, you know, high school ball. Um, Florida, too, will be fun. Yeah, with the boys. Um, but, yeah, I'm just excited to get out there senior season. You guys would probably disagree with me on this, but – Probably like the 7 a.m. practices because that's like the only time I'm actually excited to wake up at 6 o'clock. 
It's gritty. I like that. That's oh, a yeah, good, well, that's a good I, take on this. One, totally one, one of the Marple guys said something where he's like, I'm not even as excited about the baseball as I am about like just like going out to eat and like going to hang out with like the team like after wins and, and you know, the stuff like that that, you know, you can play like adult summer league and stuff and you don't really have that like type of connection. Um, are you guys all going to try and play like Delco League this summer or play any summer league around here? I mean, yeah, something the Narbor team could use some to use yeah, some yeah. talent. They, <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was thinking about contacting them. Yeah, because like, cool. like I, you know, I respect trying to go from Edco to Delco League, but it's a, it's a huge step. jump. And I know I think Van threw a couple games from last year. Maybe now that he's committed, he would play more for them. Um, they definitely care though, so I definitely recommend. It. I know yeah, there's good dudes. there's a good chunk of you know like Herod and Lower Marion yeah. area guys that, that play for them as well, and it seems like they really enjoy like. The whole like one of their jerseys says the borough, doesn't it? Yeah, they got kind of like real nice. Yeah, stuff. oh, they do. Yeah, so I respect it. Um, all right, well, gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to come thank in you. today. Uh, is there anything else you want to get off your chest while you're here? Any last any last remarks? No. Yeah. All good. Thank all right. Well, me. best of luck this season. We'll be uh, making it out to games for sure. We'll see you there. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, boys. All right, thank you to the boys from Herriton for joining the program today. It's a program I've always had a lot of respect for, a lot of close games throughout the yeah, years. Sure. Uh, two great coaches, two teams that I almost feel in a sense are always built similarly, mm-hmm. always good pitching, always quick. Maybe not for me me personally, but you know, <laughs> uh, very usually very good on the base pass, very defensively sound. Might not always have the offensive fireworks that some of the – other teams in the Central League have, but I feel like the games are like they're always chess mass- yeah, matches. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like uh, like even playing them when I was there, like same type of thing, just like a chess match type thing. They just always have good pitchers. Yeah, you know, yeah, Jack Hanowitz got drafted out of like straight out of Harrington. At least when I was there, Jonah Frankel was a mm-hmm. stud. Don DiLoretto pitched against us a lot really well. Obviously, Charlie Belli right now and Jack, and yep. you know, it's just like they. It's a lot of bet the unders on Harrington yeah, games yeah, this year. Very solid. Uh, well, speaking of Narberth area, guys, we're gonna we're gonna transfer into uh, college baseball right here and start talking a little bit about what we've seen so far. So, as we mentioned earlier in the show, this is being recorded Saturday afternoon, which, for the sake of college baseball, isn't really ideal because most teams will play throughout the whole weekend or at, definitely Saturday. Usually Saturdays and Sundays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well for for D one. Mm-hmm. I know usually D two, D three, it's more double headers. Because not a lot yeah, of them have lights. Yeah, but even then, it's still the Saturday. So uh, yeah, yeah. There's some Friday, Saturday, mostly Saturday, Sunday. It's, yeah, a little, it's doing it when we do it. It's a little bit tough because we only really get, like, the midweeks and Friday nights. But, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. We'll make it work. Yeah, yeah, we'll have conversations about if we want to record Sunday night. You know, I, I personally feel like the ideal time for the show to come out would be Sunday night. Mm. So that might not be the most ideal. Maybe we could, you know, do Monday nights. But either way, regardless, right now, We'll do what we got here. Uh, so Jack Stead is a Narberth guy. I believe he went to Malvern Prep, and he had a game-winning hit for NJIT as a freshman uh, in their win on Friday night. So that's how yeah. you get that's how you get people on your good side. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's a. Uh, I mean, as a freshman, even like getting put in that situation is really awesome. So that was good on him, man. I need to look up who they played because I'm completely blanking on that. Uh, I know we got a couple guys there. Dylan Can from Marple yeah, yeah. is is there. I know that. Um, oh, was it Elon? No, beat? so Elon was who they. No, it yes, Elon. it was Elon. Yeah, it was Elon. And we had some uh, some other guys from the area on a Elon. Of, a lot of Delco matchups. There. Yeah, Trey Tiffin from Alvin Preps on Elon. Connor Offshack still there. Tristan Corcoran, yeah. who I know 100 percent is Delco. I'm not sure about Trey and Connor. I don't nah, really know them very well. Connor but, played briefly for Upper Darby, I think. Oh, really? Well, in the Delco in the League. Delco yeah. League. Okay. Um, but, oh, and he also homered. Yeah, uh, good for him. Right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, they usually... Uh, it looks like Trey did not play in this game, but I think they, they had been hitting back-to-back. Oh, he's right there. Oh, first there's base. first base. Gotcha, yeah. One for four, I think. All right, so, so yeah, so Jack, so there's Dylan Can. He's still there as well. Nice. Uh, so, and a sophomore starting the infield. Albert Choi. I don't know if you ever played against him or with I him. I like trained I, with him at on deck for a little bit. I know that name. I, I want to like say he went to, um, geez, I think it's one of the Downing Towns. Four for five. Have a day, kid. There yeah. Go. Albert. Oh, Albert's a beast. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, so oh, he, yeah. he had a sack fly to right field. Got the. I'm sorry, it wasn't game winning hit, but he got a sack fly to uh, okay. to knock the winning run in. So it's a very very good start to your college career. I mean, most people can go a long time without having a game winning yeah, RBI. Ahead. We also had Jake Potts, Garnet Valley alum, who originally went to Hartford JUCO. He's now pitching for High Point. Uh, it's actually kind of crazy. This was High Point's first ever win against an SEC team, that. and he closed the game out. That's incredible. That was. This is like if there's anyone who's a Ole Miss slash Mississippi State fan, um, you can blame me and one of my best friends in the world because, like, when we had decided – because, you know, I played, like, D3, so we only have a D1 team to pick. 
and my whole family went to Penn State, but you know they're they can they're come. on the rise. Yeah, they're on the rise. You can't but, pick them yet. Oh uh, yeah, so can't pick them yet. But we we're I was trying to pick a and also kind of just want a different team. So I went Mississippi State. My friend went Ole Miss, and ever since we've done that, they have both been abysmal. So, so it was right after the back to back yes, championships. Yeah, it was oh right after God. that, and it was it's been rough. So you did it for Delco, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I'm like kind of furthering other people's careers by. Yeah, Jinx and, yeah, and Jake also teams. had a uh, four inning, I guess technically to save if you go that long yeah, against, yeah. I think it was UMass Lowell. So uh, good start to his career. He's, uh, I believe he's a lefty. Righty. He's, is he righty? Yeah. I just, he's, he's got the lefty build. He's like tall and, yeah. You know, well, he's the closer, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's righty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw the video. He was close. Yeah. Or he was a righty. Uh, uh, D2 baseball, Westchester started off their season this weekend. They smoked Charleston. Boy, uh, the boy Johnny DiMucci from Bonner. Had nice. a had a nice day at the plate. Uh, Springfield's own Casey Vaughn Let's go. got in late in the game as well. He just transferred from um, Cumberland County JUCO. <laughs> that, you know, Westchester is just a team loaded with Delco guys. Andrew Cantwell is back because uh, Luke graduated, so he's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Casey, Johnny Demucci, Joe Sparone, great baseball name for reliever Kyle Laser. Oh yeah, is still there, oh, yeah. and uh, you know that's a team that will definitely make it out to a home game this year for them for as sure. well. But. Um, this one, this is actually a funny, like, small world thing right here. Mm-hmm. So um, St. Joe's played at Gardner-Webb this weekend in North Carolina, and one of my my friends who was our club baseball coach is an assistant for Gardner-Webb. Okay. And for some reason in this game, they didn't have live stats available because I guess their, like, SID just had somewhere else to be. Like, they just yeah, weren't some, doing it during – they, they're up there. now, mm-hmm. but they weren't during the game. So I texted Cam after the game. And I'm like, hey, man, like, I know this is kind of a really small world, but, like, can you send me a box score from the game today? <laughs> He's like, I don't have that, but, like, you know, if you can tell me who you're looking for, I can yeah. let you know. And uh, I told him the five guys, and and he said Max and Luke Z- uh, Max Hitman and Luke Zimmerman both knocked in a run. Nice. So I'm like, I have sources. Can't, can't medic. All right. Never reveal your sources, but I don't, I don't think this is a, a journalistic, you know, <laughs> yeah, super right. secret. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah. Also, uh, in the terms of uh, – College guys, not a Delco dude, but I got to shout my guy Ben Watson. I, I, that was next oh, on my really? list. I swear to God, <laughs> I swear. I, w- I was going to say the same thing. So tell us about Ben. Oh uh, uh, well, I mean, besides being really good at baseball, uh, I guess yesterday against Rhode Island, who has a few Delco guys, I'm, I guess unfortunately, um, four for six, two doubles, triple, a bomb, first D one bomb, uh, seven RBIs. So just heck of a game, heck of a player. Had had to fit him in there. Yeah, I mean. I- so Ben went to Ruston. I had a club teammate who played with him at Ruston, so that's how I found out about him. Then he went to Elizabethtown. Have you ever seen a bigger jump than Elizabethtown to Virginia Tech? Um, I mean, outside of, like, other D3s to that caliber of school, uh, no. No, that's an outrageous jump. Yeah. There's you're a, playing in the landmark to the ACC. Yeah. Just putting it, like, in that broad terms is yeah, outrageous. I know there's, like, I saw there are a couple guys who went, like, from D3 to, like, Kentucky. So, like... I mean, but like, kind of same amount of jump. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a crazy. But like, if anyone can do it, it's him. And I mean, clearly he yeah. hasn't missed a beat. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. what is he cent- center field? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, he's he was center field the first game. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure he's center field. Yeah. Well, not not Delco, but you know, like we've always said, we uh, we try and you know. Shout out the guys that are close. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when uh, what's his face? Oh my god. Um, when Nolan Jones got called up yeah, to the big yeah. leagues, I was like, hey, listen, like he's not from Delco, but like played for Holy Ghost. Like that's yeah, close pretty enough. close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the the meat of this episode here, this is gonna be our Phillies and MLB preview because obviously at the end of the day, like our focus is always Delco High School and college and Little League and Delco League and, and whatever and everything. But you know, there's a there's a market for Phillies everywhere. And we don't, you know, we don't sell this as a Phillies podcast, but in terms of Delco baseball. The majority of people that live here are Phillies fans, mm-hmm. and they want to hear about it, or yeah, they yeah, want to absolutely. listen, you know, and it'll be not, I mean, until, what, when did we start making it Phillies only, like September? You know, it's like once the yeah, Delco... One, once everything else dies out, then it becomes I mean, Phillies. For us, the show is kind of always, what's the most pressing thing in Delco right now? Right now, it's college. Soon, it'll be high school. Go back to college for a little... Then Delco League, mm-hmm. right? Then Little League. Like, there's yeah. always something. And then once you get to September and October, it's like, hey, the only baseball outside of, like, like travel tournaments and yeah, stuff is, is the Phillies. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to start off here with just a couple of topics about the Phillies uh, that we're interested in seeing in spring training and going into the season. Then we're going to give our awards picks for the team, and then we're going to go to the rest of the league. So I want to start off here. Uh, I have these questions out of order. I'm going to start with this last one here. So last year, the Phillies, obviously, as we know, made it to the NLCS lost in uh, Game 7 to the Diamondbacks. And my first question is, 
are they able to just mentally put that collapse behind them? Because you see, like, you know, sometimes when you fail to bring home the title and you could have, like the Eagles this year, sometimes that can weigh on you a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to say Like, they're not the Eagles in a way. Like, just like, the, I think personality-wise, like, they just seem like a like if anyone's going to be able to watch something like that is them. A little looser. Yeah, I feel like yeah, the Eagles. Still a little have, like, yeah, I mean, I feel like the Eagles have some in, more intense. Yeah, and people. I mean that's come from like the top down too. Like you talk about you go like Rob Thompson versus Sirianni. Like Rob Thompson's yeah, an adult. Yeah, you know Sirianni's a college kid that somehow yeah. ended up you know <laughs> getting his daddy's company. Like that's just what he yeah. feels like. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I think that you know we've all been on teams that have had horrible losses and i think that there's been times where you let that snowball and other Mm -hmm. times where you're like all right we don't want to feel like that again Mm -hmm. so that's how we kind of have to approach it and and i think that they seem like they have their head screwed on right i mean i mean outside of reese hoskins leaving for the brewers in a way they're pretty much just running it back they've added a couple little pieces but yeah reese didn't even play last year so it kind of just feels like they're banking on the fact that Last year, they won 90 games when Trey was off until August and Bryce wasn't even healthy, really, mm. until, like, July or August. And I can't blame them. Yeah, that was, again, uh, claiming running it back never works. I'm not going to claim it, but, yeah, I, like, this was a team that was really good and just didn't make it. Like, not everyone's going to be able to win the World Series as much as we want to expect them to do it every year. Um So I think, yeah, you can – and they're good enough where you can bank on, you know, the talent there and hopefully you get a couple – you know, a couple bounces go your way. You maybe face a slightly worse pitching staff. You're able to adjust better. Like, there's a lot of things that you can do with this team already that, like, just the talent level itself allows. And I've, it's funny. I have no beef whatsoever with the Diamondbacks. I had a lot of respect for them. Mm-hmm. They just beat us. Yeah, they yeah, just beat no, I, I had, like, you know, there are plenty of times where the Phillies lose a series, and I despise the team we lose mm-hmm. to. Astros, you know, yeah, one of them. Yeah. But this team just adjusted. They realized... If we don't throw them strikes, they're going to chase. Mm-hmm. They started to steal more. They beat us with small ball, and they kind of just like erased like the uh, new word taken over the sports world, the aura of Citizens Bank yeah. Park, and and just went in there and, and gave it to us. So I have no problem with them at all. Good on them. Wouldn't be surprised if we see them again. We'll talk a little bit later about our picks, but I'm very interested to see how this Phillies bullpen rounds together because Craig Kimbrell, we know that he had his October mm-hmm. meltdowns last year, but he gave them all-star caliber uh, you know, closing abilities until he burnt out. Yeah. Do you think Alvarado's the closer now? Um, I want him to be. I, I don't know what they're going to do, uh, but I think he's, in terms, you look like stuff, and just, you can go, like, extrapolate to, like, the league. Like, there's no one with, like, what Alvarado has. Um, I think it's a question of, like, if he's given that, if he's given that role, can he, like, take that and hold on to it? Um, I think he's fully capable of it. I think he should be the closer. Um, what they're actually going to do, I, I really don't know. Because there are a lot of options now. Do you think there's a chance that they continue just to do the, we're going to put Alvarado in the three most important outs? Like, say, they're, they're facing a team's 3-4-5 in the eighth inning. That's when they want to put him in? I I hope they don't. Because my thing on that is, like, I mean, like, every out's important. So, but, and you're not going to be able to have, like, I, don't know. I think to say like oh you to look at a game and pick out the three most important outs, I I, I don't think that's possible. I, I think you need to like have a plan and kind of go on like these guys are going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, and all, everything's important. I think one guy that I would be very interested to see in the closer role would be Jeff Hoffman because outside yeah. of the one pitch that first off again when Austin Riley hit that homer in Game Two of that series that wasn't even a bad pitch. Mm-hmm. He, he was even out in front. He was just yeah. strong enough that it didn't matter. But he was somebody that didn't seem to, you know, be phased by being in, in high-pressure spots. And, I mean, his, his splitter is just nasty. Uh, so I think that he could potentially be someone that would get that opportunity as well. But I don't know. I, I think that this bullpen gets drastically underrated because of Kimbrel's meltdowns in the playoffs. If Kimbrel just didn't blow, you know, one of those two games, like if they advanced to the World Series, even if they lost to Texas, like yeah. – are they a top five bullpen? No. Are they top ten? Maybe. But, like, they're, I still believe like, They're a good bull. You look at, like, what they're going to run out there. So, there's Alvarado, obviously nasty. Mm-hmm. Jeff Hoffman had a great year. He's really good. Uh, Ryan Kirkering is going to be, I think, I-, I would like to see him in, like, start in slightly lower leverage mm-hmm. stuff just to get his feet a little bit more wet. Um, 
Sir Anthony had a down year last year, but I think he started to figure out at the end. They bought in like David Buchanan. Apparently, he looks sick now. Like the, Strom, 20, 2015 again. Yeah, yeah, like Strom was solid. Like the, they have a lot of guys who were good, and I think you can piece something together with that. I don't know that you need to go out and get a big name. Yeah. Well, the thing is, bullpen pitchers are so fleeting. Like we didn't know who Jeff Hoffman was at yeah. this time last mm-hmm. year. I would love to see uh, a resurgence of one, even one of these two guys. Connor Brogdon or Andrew Bellotti. During that 22 yeah, year, Bellotti yeah. was a star. Mm-hmm. Like he was probably our most consistent bullpen arm with his slider. And I think that, you know, it just as quickly as it goes away, it can come back. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's like a either of those two guys, they go down, regroup, and we have another really good bullpen yeah. arm. In addition to a lot of really good bullpen arms. All right. Very interesting signing. The Phillies brought in Whit Merrifield, somebody that I think. Phillies fans were always kind of intrigued by, like when you know, especially when he went to Toronto uh, after his Kansas City time. So he is someone that seems like he's okay with being in that. You're going to play two or four days a week kind of role. You're going to move around the diamond a lot and play a bunch of different positions. We're going to find ways to get you in, especially against lefties. Maybe give Brandon Marsh or Bryson Stott some days off. And I think if he's bought into that role, which it seems like he is. It might keep him more fresh throughout the year because he kind of dipped off at the end of last year. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And that's uh, – he's a good guy for them to get just because he can fit any kind of – and this, any kind of hole, I guess. Because, like, like, this is a team where if you're moving guys around defensively, there can be some – there were some issues last year. Um, and I, I do think he solves that. I don't know exactly his stats on there, but, like, I, I think he's been a good defender. He's got speed, contact. He's going to just do a lot of things to be solid for them. I also feel like he kind of represents the opposite of the Phillies' approaches in the playoffs last year. Like, when they lost that series to the Diamondbacks, and those, especially in those last two games, Nick Cassianos is the one player that you could probably say is the biggest culprit of this, but they would just chase all these god-awful pitches, Mm -hmm. and they would be trying to pull everything, try and launch everything deep into the night, you know, and it just wasn't working by the end of it because the Diamondbacks figured it out. And Witt seems like a guy who, especially if he's a pinch hitter too, he's going to come in there and he's trying to rope a liner in the gap. You know, he's not trying to pull one 450 and yeah. and take his eye off the ball and because that's just not a sustainable way to go through a whole playoff run. So I'm, I'm excited to have him here. Maybe, you know, hit, what he's doing will rub off on some other people and, and they can, you know, start to put some more quality at bats together. But very excited to have him here. I feel like the bench could use someone like him. That kind of transitions into the center field dilemma because as of right now, it, it seems like they're they're fully committed to Rojas, and it's not necessarily that's a bad thing, but I'm glad that Merrifield is there in case he struggles like he did at the end of last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I don't mind fully committing to Rojas at all. I think his upside makes it, like, justifies why you would commit to him. Despite, yeah, he struggled a lot in the playoffs. Uh, he's a really good defender, and, like, literally if his – hitting comes along at all which who knows he had what he was up there for he was up in the majors for two months like he's probably one of the best center fielders in the league yeah i wouldn't say i'm I'm necessarily worried about him long term i'm more just like if we're in a win now mode and he's not you know i mean he went what four for 40 something in the playoffs Mm -hmm. like that's just not okay no matter how well you're playing in the field and i wonder what as because as, as of right now, the in, in the bench, you know, and Mundo Sosa's back, Garrett Stubbs is back. Mm-hmm. They have uh, an interesting debate between Jake Cave and Christian Pache. And I, I would probably lean Pache just for the, the fact that he has more versatility in the outfield. And I, I just didn't like Cave didn't really do anything for no. me last year. And but the one thing that Cave has going for him is he's a, he's a lefty. Yeah, that that is, um, uh, yeah. I still like Pache. I just just does more. It's the same thing with like the Mary, like not the same thing the Maryfield thing, but it's just like there's just more he's capable of. I just feel like they don't have a true like Matt Stairs kind of guy. You know, someone nah. to come off the bench and just tr- like you know that they're coming in to swing for the fences because yeah. sometimes that is a good thing to have. I like it is, but also what team has had that in the past couple years? Uh, I mean, he who well think about this. The Phillies had to end a game with Jake Cave batting last year. Yeah, and that's not you know for not an easy hitting no, for. No. Was he hitting for it probably, probably for Rojas? Rojas. Yeah. I would imagine it's probably for Rojas. Yeah, well, and that's a I mean, that's also kind of part of it where <clears throat> I don't know they 
still have assets and money that they could spend. And if you just use that at the deadline, then, you know, you get a left-handed bat. Uh, I think you can make up for what you might miss in, like, a bench lefty. And if Rojas struggled, you can make up for that in the beginning of the regular season. Yeah, and just yeah we'll see. Break. You know, obviously Cody Bellinger's still out there. You never know. Yeah. All right, let's move into our award picks here. So I'm going to pull out my right, phone yeah, for this one here. here. And, uh, and get this thing up and running. So let's start off with our Phillies award picks for... Should we do MVP last? Uh, Yeah. yeah Philly, all right, let's start off with the... Uh, since it's, it's the first, let's go with the rookie of the year. Who do you got? All right. Uh, so I have, and I said I'd like to see him in more uh, like low leverage stuff. Uh, I think Orion Kirkring will be our rookie of the year. Care to elaborate more? Uh, yeah, I probably <laughs> should do that. Um, no, I just... Like, the his stuff is undeniable um and it, i think it's and you saw it last year where he was able to come into the major leagues and dominate hitters um it i think he lost a little confidence he got hit around as any rookie is gonna do it, and that's tough when it, it's in playoff situations um but i think if he comes in gets like a couple decent you know kind of low leverage stuff gets that confidence gets rolling like he's just again the stuff is so good that He's going to work himself into higher leverage stuff and be probably one of our more reliable relievers. Did you watch the video the Phillies posted? Yes. The behind yep. the, the yeah, catcher. Oh my a, god, uh, dude! That slider's run. It's, it was like batter's box to batter's box. Yeah, that's a driving force for my pick. I'll admit that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I will admit this was also my pick, but I, I can pick somebody else here just to keep things fresh. So I'm going to go with Griff McGarry because I think that they really needed someone to fill the role that they thought they had in Lorenzen last year, mm -hmm. where someone could if. If they need a start, they can give you a start. But realistically, you probably want them in those middle innings. Yeah. Like like that role where when Chris Sanchez starts a game and gives you three, he can give you another three mm -hmm. and, and kind of get to that back end of the bullpen. Struggled a little bit last season down in, I forget if he was in double or triple A. He might have bounced back and forth. But he's someone the organization has viewed very highly. I think people have soured a little bit just because he had a rough year. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of banking this on the fact that he's not – necessarily the highest prospect but he's probably the most you know he's like the closest to the big leagues in terms of his estimated yeah. time like there's obviously more talented guys i don't think mick abel will play this year so i'm, yeah. I'm not really you see, like mcgarry seems like a guy that they're not afraid to have fail no no so that'll, that'll be my pick here um let's go into the comeback player of the year so my comeback player of the year um pretty obvious it's gonna be aaron nola um i just I don't know. He's better than what last year was. Um, that's basically my argument. And I think I'm a big believer, a math major, a big believer in the law of averages. So, like, being down there, he's eventually either going to go back to what he is or above what he is. That That's just how that works. And, I, I, yeah, I think, he, I think I'll about to He also here. feels like, to me, the kind of opposite of guys in their contract year. I feel like he's the kind of guy that does better with no distractions. Mm -hmm. And now that he's locked up for seven years – he doesn't have to worry about yeah, like yeah. is this my last start here like what am i playing for my career here and you know i feel like some people are the opposite where they kind of get content when they get that deal like they worked their ass off in last year they got paid now they kind of anthony rendon it you know and yeah, just like yeah, yeah. do the motions but i feel like Noah's the kind of guy where now that he has no distractions he you know we got him for 7 years and he can kind of just like yeah. take a deep breath and get back into his you know, mid to high three ERA and, and something like that, yeah. you know, 200 plus innings. Just All right. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go bold here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go Scott Kingery. Dude, I, I think if, I would love that. If we, we talked to, I was trying to keep my poker face when you, you, you showed me the video before, oh. before the show. <laughs> and it, this Scott Kingery home run on Saturday was like right before we started recording. And I, I just feel like what a story it would be. Mm -hmm. if they, they gave him, what was it like six years before he even played a big league game? Yeah, and he's been in the minors for most of the last couple of years. He could be somebody where if Johan Rojas is just awful at the plate, perhaps he could get a shot. If there's an injury, please. he can play second base. I mean, I guess not please, but like I, I think that I don't know if I'd put him at shortstop, like no. in the sense of if somebody gets hurt, would you take him over Edmundo Sosa? Probably not. But he absolutely could like overtake a Pache on the bench mm -hmm. or Jake Cave or whoever 
it might be if he has a great spring and which he always does. But you know, it would probably have to take an injury, I think, yeah. to get him up here. I mean, unfortunately, we've seen him rake in spring training before, and yeah. and it doesn't translate to anything. But I mean, if he even contributes to like big wins and big moments of this year. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's, everybody uh, wrote him off. It seems like he's kind of stuck in that like quadruple A type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Just as a guy, who's, I guess kind of like a I don't know, process feel. Like I would love to see him come back up and play. I, I don't know if he's going yeah. to, but like even I, if he's, awesome. even if he's not here next year, just kind of complete the circle. Yeah. You yeah. Know? All right. Cy Young as the as the pitcher of the podcast. What do you uh, got? We're going a little bullpen heavy on my on my uh, awards. We're going Jose Alvarado. Okay. Um, I. I mean, I think I think Wheeler's gonna. I, I that's not saying that like Wheeler no like those guys aren't gonna do what they do. I think they will. Um, I, I think he really ha- like. I think he has the potential. To, I'm again kind of going off of pure stuff. He has the potential to just like be that dude, be a lockdown closer, and I think that's something that we haven't really had that much of. Um, so yeah, that's that's my guy. All right, uh, I'll, I'll be boring here. I'll take Wheeler, and especially yeah. because I think almost in a sense like the opposite of what we were talking about with Nola. Where Wheeler seems like somebody that no grudge against the Phillies, but like a contract year would fuel him, mm-hmm. you know, to, to get yeah. paid and get that long term deal, especially if he feels like the Phillies are kind of lowballing him a little bit, which I hope isn't the case. Obviously, we're not in the negotiating sure. room. We have no idea. People might be worried that he's like 34 now, I think. Yeah, he's a little bit older. But again, but, like with pitchers, and he's gotten the elbow done a couple of times. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's like real or not, but I feel like that's added longevity to the guys. Yeah, well, and it's also that I feel like he's kind of reminds me of, you know, kind of like a Verlander-ish where he could almost just like, almost keeps getting better. Yeah. But also the fact that he, since he was hurt for a while, that's a lot less innings on him. Mm-hmm. So he has, you know, the innings of somebody who's a lot younger than he is yeah. because of the injuries. But I know it's boring, but I, I mean, Wheels, I wouldn't be surprised if he contends for the actual Cy Young as yeah, well. Yeah, n- not at all. All right. Your most valuable player for this Phillies season. Right. You going uh, safe or you going uh, bold? I'm gonna go go and go safe. We're going Bryce. Uh, I just I don't know. It's Bryce. I, that's that's really all I can like. That's my best argument. It's that's just banking it's on who he is. Just, like he's that guy. Like it's just, just gonna be him. I mean, he hasn't been fully healthy. I feel like for a whole year, and not not and even to his, a, and he's still a yeah, not <laughs> even to his own accord. Because last year he had the surgery coming back. Mm-hmm. The year before that was when he broke his thumb. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I wanted to pick him as well, but I, I'm going to go with Trey because I, like I feel like... So if I was the, the Phillies manager, this might be a hot take, but the biggest question that I feel like you have to answer is who should bat behind Bryce because he always gets pitched around in big spots. And I, I truly think that Trey Turner has enough pop that you could put him at the four spot so people you know, will be more willing to pitch to Bryce. And I know that Trey's fast. I, I understand that, that you know you want to have him on base for Bryce. Mm-hmm. But I think that in my my crazy lineups, like you keep Schwarber at one, I would put Stott at two because he always gets on base and he's yeah. quick. Right. Then you have Bryce and then Trey. Then after that, you can go like JT and Boehm and, and Cassidy. Yeah, I guess the only thing with that is if they didn't want to lead off with three lefties. Understand. Um, but also like... Stott and Harper hit lefties okay. I think Stott's about the same both yeah, ways. Yeah. And, um, um, so, I don't know. I actually kind of like that. I, I just feel like the biggest problem last year was that Bohm was behind Harper in the order and just mm-hmm. wasn't hitting in the playoffs. So, the Diamondbacks just stopped pitching to him. And it just like... It's kind of an easy... You know, yeah. and, and it was understandably so. Like, they basically said, we're going to... We're gonna you know, pitch around the all around the lefties and then get your righties yeah. to chase. So, you know, JT says that he's fixed something in his swing, so maybe he yeah, has something going I mean, for him. I mean, he was – that was him two years ago, right? That was JT two years ago, batting mm-hmm. behind Bryce, yeah. Uh, speaking of boom, he's a guy who I think is going to really need to have a big year. I'm just I, – I feel like every year this is like, the oh, this is the Alec Bohm mm-hmm. breakout year coming, yeah. and it's just at that point now where he's – Age-wise, going into his prime. And, like, I like him. I, I just think that some Phillies fans are too attached to him at third. Yeah. When when you think about, like, some of the other guys that are, are out there or could have been out there, like Alex Bregman's a free agent after this year. And, and if, you know, Houston doesn't want him back. Like, I think yeah. Boehm is not you're not locked into him long-term. Yet. He's not irreplaceable, no, I think. No, He's a good player. I, think he's, I still think he's a very good player. Yeah, and um, but. I never thought he would get to the point defensively where he is now, yeah, that yeah. he's at the very least – Average, yeah. like serviceable. All right, well, um, we're going to get into the MLB like playoff picture here and talk about everything. So let's start now that you know we were on the Phillies. Let's start with the National League. 
and, right. and go from there. So we go in, are we going? Let's go division by division. Who's winning the NL East? Braves. Yeah, I have the Braves yeah. as well. Um, and you know, as we know, it doesn't necessarily matter in terms of the long, the playoffs, and you know, the long term outlook. But I think that's that's pretty easy. We don't really have to elaborate on that. No, if they I, get a healthy, like if, a, yeah, if they get a healthy Chris Sale this year too, yeah, uh, they're going to be they're going to be tough. Very good rotation. So we don't have to go too much into that. But the NL Central is interesting because yeah. the Brewers lost Brandon Woodruff. Uh, to injury and Corbin Burns to trade. They did add Reese, but I'm not picking them. What do you got? I actually did pick them. Yeah. I think, like, I don't know. They have a <clears> lot of – they brought a decent amount of lineup back. Um, Jackson Churio, if he makes a team uh, – I mean, they just gave him a huge contract. He's one of the top prospects in baseball. It could be like could be a stud for them, just like kind of game changer type thing. The pitching will be somewhat of a question, but they still have guys there. Like Freddie Peralta, they still have guys. Who, Devin Williams in the back end. They still have guys that are pretty good. Um, I don't know, they're probably a little bit pissed off because Craig Council left. I, I like the manager they bought in. I think it's Pat Murphy. Um, and just that entire division, like, it's just all meh. They do always just find a way. Yeah. Don't yeah. they? You know? Uh, I'm going with the Cubs for the, for. Craig Council being a big reason for that, you know, heading over there. I feel like they have uh, a very good core. I I would like them to have Cody Bellinger back if if I want to feel really good about this pick. But overall, I think they have a a solid rotation. Justin Steele had a phenomenal year last year. You know, they got Dansby back as well. I I think that the division winner might be around 500, to be completely honest. It'll probably be like an 88 and um, whatever, 162. Yeah, they also got Hector Neris, which which will help their bullpen out. He had a great year last year and has been good. Really, since he left the Phillies, he's been great. Mm -hmm. You know, won a World Series against us, obviously. Uh, Like I said, I don't feel great about this pick, but that's who I'm going with. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone you'd feel good about in the NL Central. All right, NL West. Dodgers. Yeah, Dodgers are... Fairly easy pick. I will say, though, that since Shohei can't pitch this year, their rotation is not incredible. It's good, but it's not like... They, they yeah, have some They have I some mean, holes. Like, what? So it's Yamamoto. So is Walker Bueller back? Yes, he Walker be Bueller back. is back. So that yeah, that was a big thing from it. So Bueller's back. He's going to be good. Yamamoto. Kershaw will be out for a little bit. Bobby Miller has the potential. Oh, and Glass now. I, I, I'm a... Pretty big glass now hater. Uh, to yeah, be but in the regular season, he's going to be solid. Oh, I'm just talking about the fact that he just always gets hurt. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean this is this is a good rotation. I don't know if I'd call it. It's probably it's probably it's, it's, it's definitely top ten. I think that's a very good rotation. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's a, yeah. it does have question marks though because Yamamoto's never pitched in the majors. Glasnow barely pitches over 50 innings. Mm-hmm. Kershaw's old. Bueller's coming off Tommy John. It has, I'll say it has the potential to be yeah like, top that's, three, I, top five. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, that's like that definitely has good potential. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm picking the Dodgers as well, but mm-hmm. I don't think that they're going to be some like super team juggernaut. At least not until Shohei can pitch as yeah. well. I think that they're. I lineup- don't even think even then that like, I think they're going to be pretty close to what they have been just now. Which yeah, I mean, like, I mean, lineup: Freddie Freeman back, Mookie Betts back. It's mm-hmm. kind of hard to pick against. Yeah. yeah. That uh, a lineup with that core, and now you have Shohei just thrown yeah. in the middle of uh, that order. The question with them, it's not the regular season's not a question with them. It's always the playoffs. Dave Roberts is their worst yeah. asset that they mm-hmm. have. It really, he really is. Um, all right, so we'll head to the American League now. American okay. League East. Are we doing the wild cards, or are we going to? Yeah, actually, no, you're right. Let's yeah. do the wild cards right. here. Um, so first, uh, actually, just give me your three teams. You don't have to do an order. All right. Uh, so three, I I put them in order. So um, is it, if it's okay, if I do them in order, so. Uh, one fills, two D backs, three. So this was also we have sleeper teams coming up later. This is really my main sleeper in the NL, the St. Louis Cardinals. I have the same exact three. No way. Yeah, I have the same exact three. Hell yeah, that's I. The Cardinals I really and fills and D backs I think are self explanatory. Um, That'd be a fun wild card yeah, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, especially if it's here again. Mm-hmm. That the Cardinals last year just seemed <sighs> fluky. Yeah, like, no, I think it was their first year without Yachty. They had some. Um, some tough, you know, injuries mm-hmm. and some tough pitching. And I think that now, you know, they went out, they got Sonny Gray, they got Lance Lynn, they got the best inning eater of all time, Kyle Gibson, give oh, you yeah. six innings, three runs every <laughs> every single outing. I think that, you know, they still have Goldschmidt and Arenado. They got the goat Lars Newt Bar mm-hmm. out there in center field. They, Jordan uh, Walker. Jordan Walker, yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't think they're going to be elite. I'm maybe 85 wins, you know, enough yeah, yeah. to make the wild card. But they'll get in and be able to – They'll get in and have a chance to uh, pull, like, St. Louis Cardinals BS again yeah. in the playoffs. Yep. All right. American League, AL East. 
Yankees. The Yankees. Juan Soto moving the needle for you? Yeah, Juan Soto, and also I just it seems like Blake Snell is going to go there. Is that is that the rumor? I, like, I don't know. It's like it's got leaked that they offered him a contract, and no one else. It hasn't really been out said that anyone else did. It it just seems like they're going to pay what they have to to get him. Okay. Uh, I'm going with the Orioles. I think that this is a team that won 100 games last year. They will potentially have Jackson Holiday mm-hmm. joining the mix. They'll have Corbin Burns as their uh, their ace of the staff now. They All their young guys have gotten a taste of the playoffs. They know what it's like. They got the experience now, and, and they almost have uh, – you know, a problem with too much talent that they don't have, you know, enough yeah. space for all of them. So I'm, I'm going to say that they, you know, the Yankees have a good year. Uh, I have them, we'll talk about the wild card, but uh, I, I like the O's to, to run it back again. Yeah, that's, I like the, I like the O's. I, I, get, I have them as a wild card team. Um, I just, like, they won so many close games last year that I just, I don't think that's sustainable. And it's like, they're going to be a playoff team, but I think some of those might not go their way this year. Um, and just, uh, I think the Yankees are going to be really good. So. All right, AL West. West? Did I miss Central? Yeah. AL Central. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the Guardians. I, I really like I, this. I might as well have just closed my eyes and pick it. Yeah, pick the team. No, absolutely. Um, but I'm going to go with the Guardians. They have good things. At, like they always, They're kind of like the Brewers. They just, yeah. like, when, when there's no clear winner, you're just like, hey, look, they're yeah, in first I place. Feel, in I feel like the year. Central's kind of like the uh, NFC East where, like, no one wins it, like, back-to-back. Back, back. Yeah. So I, I'm going to go with them. Uh, I'm in no way, shape, or form confident or happy with that pick, but that's my pick. Yeah, I'll go with the Twins. I think okay. that, you know, they, they lost Sonny Gray, but outside of that, they got – I think they traded Jorge Polanco. I, I don't even remember where. But yeah, Mariners, yeah, maybe? Uh, I, yes, I believe yes, it's the Mariners. It's the Mariners yeah. So, uh, you know, but they still have a lot of the team coming back. They got Correa. They got Kenta Maeda. You know, Joe Ryan in the, in the rotation. They got a, a very solid team. And I think that are they going to go deep in the playoffs? No, but I very much think that they have on paper the best talent in that division. And, you know, winning that playoff series last year, I think, kind of kind of let yeah. them breathe a little bit. You know, they... I mean, Minnesota sports in general had such a long playoff drought and everything. And I think the Twins, they were, they were like 0-18 at one point in the playoffs like in a row, which is just absurd. So uh, I like them to uh, to use that momentum and, and, and just at the very least just win the division. Yeah. All right. So wild cards for the – oh, wait, now we got to do AL West. Yeah, I am all over the place. You got me a, thrown off. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, AL West. Houston. Yep. Uh, I have the Rangers. Okay. Because I, I think that – they, so they're going to lose Jordan Montgomery most likely, yeah. but they have Jacob Degrom coming back. So if but, you th- like the thing with Jacob Degrom is kind of like you were same thing. Like how how long is he going to be healthy? I'm just for? banking. Like, this is you know in the pick here. I'm just banking on yeah, him that's right. saying. Uh, no, that's right. I'm banking on him being healthy for the right parts of the year. Yeah, I okay. guess is, is a good way to put it. And I don't know. I mean, I think lineup wise, you know, Semyon's back, Seager's back, Adolis is back, Evan Carter you know, yeah. is a rookie this year. Already mm-hmm. has a ring, and he's technically a rookie this year. But um, I don't want to spoil anything else, so let's let's just go with the wild cards here. All right. Uh, so I got wild card one O's, two Blue Jays, three Rangers. Okay. I, I thought you were about to leave the Rangers out. No, I'm like the no. reigning champs. I chance. think like. So you're so, high on the Blue Jays. Um. High enough. Yeah, like I think they're than better I. than the other. I, like I, I think the Rangers will probably go pretty far. I forget what I have them doing. Uh, like they're a good team. I just. I think like losing Montgomery, you're kind of relying on some like guys who are injury prone. Yeah. Small. Like they're gonna make it in. Um, they're good. Like they're the talents like good enough to make it in. Um, so, but I think it's gonna be as a three. I think the Blue Jays will just. It's gonna be a typical like AL East year where three teams get in. I, I was think. just. I have the Rays as my last okay, team, just because I, yeah. I. The Blue Jays, man. I feel like you ever see those those memes on Twitter where it's like Justin Herbert and hypothetical c- yeah, scenarios, it and it's like Superman. Them. I just feel like it's like everybody every year is like, oh man, look at the Blue Jays, like Vladdy and Biggio and all yeah. this, and then every year they know. just disappoint, you know. So yeah, like yeah. I. Um, I, I don't think they're bad. I just if I, I will take the Rays' track record of making the playoffs fair, over yeah, the Blue Jays. That was I, I'm not super high on them. That's again like if you were like oh like if we had to make one <laughs> together yeah. and you said Rays, I'm like eh, go ahead. <coughs> um, but I don't know. I, they'll I think they'll make it. Yeah. Man. All right. So I think the way we should do this is I'm going to rip through my National League as a whole, then you do that. Yeah. Then we right, go. That works. So I have the Phillies taking down the D-backs. Uh, I okay. think revenge. It would be good. I think the Phillies will come out pissed off. Mm-hmm. Obviously, as we saw with Game 6 and 7 last year, it doesn't necessarily matter that it's home, but yeah. I'd still rather have it home than on the road. I like Wheeler, Nola, and Suarez over, uh, I guess, well, I guess, you know, Gallon, Kelly, 
they they weren't the ones that shut us down last year. It was their bullpen that got to us. Mer- I mean, Merrill know? Kelly threw a gem in game six in the six in the second yeah. one. He was good. Zach um, Gallon sucked. Yeah, I want to put that out there. Yeah, so he was talking shit. I'll take too. Wheeler over Gallon, and then you know, I I'm, I think their three might be Eduardo Rodriguez now, not it's Brandon Fott. You know, I don't know. Like Brandon Fott might pitch his way into that. We'll see. We'll see. Either good. way, I, I yeah. like that matchup. Uh, it's funny. So I'm picking the Cubs win the division, but I'll take the Cardinals in the series because the, because the <laughs> I had, my poker face is so bad. I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Because the Cardinals. <laughs> Well, you had the Cardinals winning. No, you didn't have. You no, had them I, over I the had, Brewers. We had them the same thing. Yeah, but oh, okay, I had them okay. beating the Brewers. <laughs> okay, so 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 Cardinals. Uh, it's just like it's the mystic of, yep, the, of yep, the Cardinals. Yeah, it's the aura. You know. Yeah, I mean, I also like you know, I like Sonny Gray in a rotation. I think that they. Uh, I mean, Miles Michaelis is good against people not named Bryce Harper, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just think that they, as an organization, like when you think of what the Cardinals are and what the Cubs are, it's just like you take yeah. the Cardinals, right? Yeah. Um, and then after that, I have, in this scenario, so I'm going to have the way that it, it finished. I'm going to say the Dodgers finished with the best regular season record. I'm with so, you on that. So the yeah. Phillies play the Dodgers, and I have the Dodgers taking them down because I feel like what has Wait. been happening is the Phillies. Oh, I messed this up then. What? So the, the three and six, the winner of that plays the one. It, uh, I, I thought, does it matter? No, wait. No, I th- is, it, is it the lowest team yeah, remaining? Yeah, wait, four and five. It's the lowest seed. It's the lowest seed remaining because when we beat the, um, I, well, I thought the Braves had more wins than the Dodgers last year. They did, but we were, but the, uh, but we were still oh, a higher. Wait, seed. No, that's we were a, good a higher point. seed than the Diamondbacks beat the Brewers. The Diamondbacks were the sixth seed, and then they played the Dodgers. Who were the? Two? So, so it might have been a bracket then. Who were well, the two? Right. Oh, I think either way I'm wrong. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I think I'm right. I'm trying to – I think the thing that we need to figure out now is uh, who was the one seed in the playoffs last year. The one seed in the NL, I think, was the Braves. It was, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it is a bracket then. So Because then, the six Diamondbacks played the two Dodgers. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it's a bracket. Oh, so, I'm, okay, so my thing was right then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I had, I had the Dodgers as the one seed. And then, uh, so in this scenario, the Phillies play the Dodgers instead of the Braves in the second round, and I and I have the Phillies losing, and then I have the Braves taking down the Cardinals. Okay. So going into the NLCS, oh wait, it, so yeah, then I was wrong. So okay. it, it pains me to say this, but I do have the Braves winning the National League this year. I feel yeah. like it's one of those things where, in all of these last years, they've been the most talented team in the National League, but it's the mental side of playing us that's mm. that's brought them yeah. down. So I'm saying in this bracket. They don't have to play us. Yeah, they would probably rather play the Dodgers than play us, just yeah. based on the vibes that the series has had over the last two years. So I have the Braves coming out of the National League. What do you got? Um, all right. So as I said, Cardinals over Brewers, um, Phillies over D-backs. I just the Phillies in a three-game series, the bank. I, I don't think that's like beatable. Um, that could come back to bite me. I do think it's beatable, but I don't think they will this time. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, okay, that's right. I, that's it's going to be tough in the win. So I have. Um, so you know what? I'm just for the sake of what I have. I guess I'll say the Braves the one seed. So the Phillies play the, the Phillies play the Braves. Um, I have the Braves beating them. I think like they're a good team. We're a good team. We're going to meet in the playoffs a bunch at some point. They're going to. We win. can't win every yeah, year. Yeah, you're not. We can't win every I just year. almost more of like for insurance. I'm saying this year is that year. Um, and then I have the Cardinals and the Aura over the Dodgers in the first Love round. It. Just, I really hate the Dodgers. So, like, I'm just kind of. So, Braves, it. Cardinals, and LCS? Yeah, and I have the Braves over the yeah. Cardinals in that. Both That's, have the Braves coming out of the side. Yeah. That's probably good because, you know, we're usually wrong a lot. So, yeah, that means yeah, we're not good. Yeah. yeah. All right, American League. Uh, so, I have in the first round, I have the Rays taking over the Twins. The Twins will be the three seed. I, okay. I think that it could also be. One of those scenarios where even as the sixth seed, the Rays might have more wins than than <laughs> them to begin with. Uh, so I will have the Rays winning that matchup. A very, very... It's funny that it's a wild card matchup. Yankees-Astros as that 4-5 oh, matchup. Like I, ha- I have the Astros winning that series. Okay. Another thing where it's like... It's like a mental thing. You yeah, know, the Astros yeah, yeah. just own the Yankees in the playoffs, and they have in this whole era, um, not aura, era, <laughs> and they, uh, you know, especially if it's in Houston too, where that, like, a yeah, yeah. Chapman walk-off happened, and, you know, you go into a series with Justin Verlander and Fromber, and, and now they have Josh Hader in that mm-hmm. bullpen as well. I will take the uh, the Astros in that series. So, move us. I will say that the Orioles will... Advanced to the ALCS. They got swept by the Rangers last year. I'll say they take down the Astros this year to uh, okay. to get there. I really like what they've done in terms of their rotation. I think now that they have a true ace that they trust, they can really match up early in that series and mm. not get, you know, because like last year the Rangers had to win to get to them. The Rangers are, you know, throwing out like 
a guy in the middle of the rotation and the Orioles are supposed yeah. to have their ace and Kyle Bradis gets rocked, right? Yeah. Like it's just not uh, sustainable. Uh, just like last year, I'll have the Rangers taking on the Rays. And for the final in- Infinity Stone gauntlet, I do have the Orioles getting a, a, a revenge tour over the Rangers. Right. I have the Orioles coming out of the okay. AL. I, I think it's, you know, it's crazy that it almost feels like a bold prediction because in terms of the World Series odds, I think they're like fifth or sixth. Yeah. So I, I'm just banking on the fact that they carry over what they built last year. They come back and, you know, this is the year where it kind of reminds me like they're the, they were the 07 Phillies. Mm-hmm. Now they're the 08, right? In terms of just like they they got in all bright-eyed. They got humbled. Not, even, not necessarily humbled. They just learned like, you know, we got to be better than we were yeah. last year. Uh, so I'll take the Orioles. Um, so I have the Rangers beating Cleveland. Um, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, they're just better. better. Yeah. Um, and then I have the O's over the Blue Jays. Uh, again, I just I think the Orioles are better. Um, so then I'm going to say Houston's the one seed. I think they beat Baltimore. Um, I think I like the com- the comparison there. I also don't think they're quite there yet. Um, I, I think they might. There might be things they still need to add, maybe a little bit better pitching. Who knows? Um, it's actually lost Felix Batista for the year, yeah, too. You yeah, know? yeah. So there's, there's just, there's still, like, the Orioles are going to be good. There's still some question marks on there. And I think when you run into a team like Houston where they're just so, like, experienced and, like, the, the combination of experience and talent, there's a reason they make it as far as they do every mm-hmm. year. I think that's going to happen again. Um, and then I have the Yankees over the Rangers. Um and then I actually have the Yankees beating Houston, so to just kind of a get like a revenge type. Yankees Braves World Series. Yeah, that's like, I tried to pick the the worst World Series possible. So is that, that as like, a Phillies fan? Yeah, yeah so that's like that's when true. I'm wrong, like it's actually a good thing. Yeah, I mean, outside of you know, it was funny. Like I hated the Astros so much that I was kind of rooting for the Braves in that series. Like, I was rooting for the Braves in that know, series. I'm yeah. like. I honestly, this is like a terrible thing to admit as a Phillies fan. I really don't mind the Braves. Yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them. But with that being said, um, I, I I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Orioles to win. I like it. I do. I, I'm I'm riding with I'm riding with this group. I, I'm I'm kind of bought in. Uh, I especially think that you know Camden is a tough place to play in as mm-hmm. well when they're when they're yeah, good. And, uh, absolutely. You know, I think the Rangers were just on a mission last year that it didn't matter. But uh, I know I, I don't even. It's it's bold but not bold, I guess is the best okay. way to put it. So I'll take I'll take the O's. I have the Braves. Um, uh, <coughs> I, again, like it just feels like it's gonna happen at some point. So let's just get this out of the yeah. way. Yeah, they're gonna um, do what they did in the nineties. They're gonna win yeah. one and just yeah. choke every other year. I guess they did already win one, so maybe now they're yeah, just I gonna choke every other year. Without but, not with Acuna though. Yeah, he. Oh my God, he's so good. Uh, yeah, that's I don't know. All right, yeah, well, I got Braves. So. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, let's rip off a couple of award picks for the whole league before we uh, we wrap up the show cool. here. We can do this one a little quick. Um, we'll end with MVP like we did last okay. time. So let's pull up the order. Do you want to do like sleeper teams first, and then do we just go in reverse order here? Yeah, we can yeah. go. Yeah, we can go reverse. All, All right. right, let's start sleeper teams here for the National League. Uh, I'm going to go with the Reds. I don't know if that's okay. still a huge sleeper. Obviously, I didn't pick them in the playoffs. Very, very young team. Mm, they have a yeah. lot of very young talent. Ellie De La Cruz started hot, kind of cooled off towards the middle and end of the year. Matt McClain looks like a, a star in the making at second base. They got Hunter Green in the rotation. A lot of young talent. I think this is a team that, for them, a successful year would be like being in the wild card race to like September. Yeah, you I know? like that. Yeah, um, I have the Padres, which like it, I, no, that is a sleeper. Yeah, That's like, absolutely I, a sleeper. They lost it. Like I mean, they lost Snell and, Ty- they lost and, Snell. and Soto. Snell and Soto, but yeah. they also st- like they still have good players. I don't know if they're going to put it together, but like if you look at I don't know, looking at the NL, I was like, who out of the teams I didn't think make the playoffs like had the best shot making a run? I think it's them. That's absolutely a sleeper. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, from the American League, I'm going to go with the Royals. I think the Royal, okay. I think the Royals are a team that, if anything, they're showing that they're trying. They went out and they signed a bunch of you know very solid players, mm-hmm. nothing flashy, but enough guys that will help Bobby Witt have a little more of a secure, um, not so security, supporting cast, and a little more security in the lineup is what I meant to say. Uh, do I think they make the playoffs? No. Do, are they in an awful division? Yes. So yeah, they're probably going to so, beat yeah. up. You know, I don't think the Tigers are quite ready to take that leap mm-hmm. into the sleeper team category yet. Uh, the White Sox are god awful. 
I don't think Cleveland's good, and, and the Twins are probably going to take a step back. So I, I think that the Royals could be a team that could just kind of like you know sneak some uh, wins and start to build like that that winning culture up. For sure, um, I had two because I couldn't really pick between. Uh, I have the Mariners and I have the Rays. Um, the Mariners. Kind of like I think last year kind of killed their momentum a little bit. Two years ago was great. Yeah, uh, take off the Rays. That's not. I don't think the Rays are a sleeper. No. they win like ninety plus games. You know, I'm thinking oh, like team I, to take that next step. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they've won ninety plus games, subtracted players pretty much consistently, yeah. and haven't made it out of the wild card round. Like, I, I, I yeah, guess, like, <laughs> they could probably do it. I'm thinking like non playoff teams, so like the Mariners. You know, a uh, team that was yeah, in the playoffs yeah. in the year before. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm going to keep them on there. Yeah. I think they're, like, in terms of this year, like, kind of a They're not super. in the conversation. For yeah, yeah, they're the not time. in the conversation. They're, yeah. they're out of the conversation. Yeah, so all right, let's go, let's go comeback player of the year. So I have, we're going to start off in the American League. I'm going with Carlos Rodon because okay. I think that he was a huge signing for the Yankees. He was awesome in 22 and 21 with the White Sox. You know, mm-hmm. showed up to New York, was hurt to start the year, came back, pitched terrible, was hurt again. They gave him too much money. You know, they, they kind of, for them to make the World Series, they need him to be elite to go along with yeah. Garrett Cole, Marcus Stroman, maybe Blake Snell as mm-hmm. well, uh, and Nestor. Like, I think that, uh, I think Carlos wrote on, at the very least, all he really has to do is be like a number two or number three, right? Yeah. Like, I know they paid him, you know, almost like ace money, but they just need him to be a lot better than last year yeah. and healthy. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have Alec Manoa. Um, I think just the wheels came off for him yeah, last year. That's a good one. He looks, uh, he looks a lot yeah, thinner. He looks, he looks like he's got back in shape a little bit. I'm sure the offseason was – I'm sure he needed the offseason as much as anyone. Um, like, honestly, like, it can't get any worse. So, well, I guess it could. But, um, I don't know. I, I do is, that, think, is that a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nah, I just I, – like, he did – he played – or he pitched well. I think if he can get back to that, which he very well can – yeah, he's going to bounce back. He fell as far as anybody yeah, in terms dude. of he's getting lit up in, like, single A. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. All right, uh, for the comeback player for the NL, I'm going Chris Bryant. I, I feel like he's a guy who, when he, he was – he's Anthony Rendon, but he's pissed that he's not playing well. Yeah. That's – like, he, he got a huge contract with a crappy team that's really not even trying to contend, it feels like. But I, I think that Chris Bryant, especially in a hitter's park – I'll bounce back on him having a good statistical season, even if yeah. the Rockies are terrible. Like he, for all intents and purposes, he's he's kind of the he should be the face of the franchise, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even know if he is considered that. I don't know if anybody's considered that. Yeah, I don't that. think they have a face but of the franchise. I, I think that uh, I I think Chris Bryant may not get back to MVP caliber, but I miss you know he he was a fun player to watch mm-hmm. during those Cubs years, even sure. even when he was on the Giants during that year where they they had the you know crazy season. So I'll, I'll go with Chris Bryant to uh, come back. Um, I have Tim Anderson, which is like okay. a, I don't know. Like, he was I, awful last yeah, year. Yeah, in so an abysmal fine. year last year. It's yeah. just weird because he's gone from AL to NL. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I don't know, like, new scenery. Like, he's been good in the past. He's going I guess he's going to get to play second base now. Um, so maybe just a little bit easier defensive assignment. Uh, just the guy I think I could bounce back. It's cr- he had a negative two war last year, which is crazy for someone that won a batting Dude. title like two years ago. Yeah, you know? that's, I think he bounces back. Yeah. All right, let's go to the coach of the year. Uh, this kind of goes with some of our playoff picks, but I'm going to go Brandon Hyde to go back to back. I think, especially if they're the one seed again, which yeah. in my predictions I do have them being. Uh, I think that you know it might it, it might be a little less forgiving for him because he's not taking a team that was expected to do bad. Mm. So I think for for the sake of that, that might be tough for the argument. But I think if they win 105 whatever games, like he could get it again. Yeah, um, for the AL. I actually have Aaron Boone. I don't know. I figured, like, the Yankees are going to be... I, the AL, I didn't really know. It was like, the Yankees are going to be good. They weren't good last year. Like, who's their manager? That was kind of my... Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was all yeah. I Yeah, no. Uh, um, and for the NL, I'll go Craig Council because if I'm picking, you know, the Cubs to win the division, which they didn't last year, he's going to be a big reason why that happens, I would imagine. Yeah. And just kind of riding with, with my picks here. So, yeah. I am on kind of that same thing. I'm going Pat Murphy, who took over for the Brewers, I, I think... I don't know. He's it, there's a video out of like him kind of talking guys. He seems like he has a really good grasp of like what's going on there. I think he's going to be able to get guys to buy in again. I think they're going to win the central. And like when you look at what they maybe like kind of did in the off season, who they lost. Um, also like coming into that as a first year manager, I, I, I think he could get he, he could be a, have a good shot for that. We we were loyal to our picks. Yes. Yeah. 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 
All right, rookie of the year. So I, for both of mine, I'm going to go with two guys that were college baseball stars this most recent year. Okay. So the Rangers, I'm going Wyatt Langford because I, I like think that. he could get thrown yeah, yeah. in. He was, you know, very, in my opinion, MLB ready while he was playing in, uh, in the College World Series last year. He is an absolute unit. I think he has the two furthest home runs ever recorded in Omaha. I believe this most recent year for Florida. And, and I think that a Rangers team that it, it's like an almost like a rich get richer type thing. Imagine an outfield with Evan Carter, Adolis Garcia and him. That's a crazy stacked yeah. and, and young outfield yeah. for the, the core going forward. And I think that, you know, at the time of the draft, when the Tigers picked Max Clark, I think Tigers fans were upset that they didn't take Wyatt Langford. But for the Tigers' timeline, yeah, it, it made sense to sense, you know yeah. wait for that. So I'm going to go with Wyatt Langford to uh, do what he did in Florida, pretty much. I like that. I think that's very possible. I just like that quick jump. I don't want to underestimate it. Mm-hmm. And like very well, I could be in the wrong for doing that. Um, but I have so I said if Jackson Holiday makes a team, I think it will be him. Um, if he doesn't and he kind of comes in mid-year, because we don't really know yet what he's going to do, I have Evan Carter. So another Rangers outfielder. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I felt Holiday was like the safe option, which yeah, is kind of yeah. funny and yeah, how yeah. young he is, which just how, I mean, I haven't, I don't remember as hyped of a prospect. I'm going to be honest, probably since like, maybe not Harper, but he's got to be close in terms of hype of a prospect. Yeah, like like Strasburg, Har- maybe? Harper's hype, the two of them. Ha- like, Harper was different. Do you Harper. remember like those two guys coming in was like the entire world. I would say almost like a... I don't know, like Mike Troutish, kind of. Like, because he came in and he was like, he's like that dude, like MLB ready, like that. Yeah. Like, kind of went up through the minors. It's different because like, Holiday's dad, you know, yeah, was in the majors. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, for the NL, I, I don't feel great about this pick. I know he has a talent, but it might be soon. I'm going with Paul Skeens because yeah. I think the, the Pirates rotation is so bad and just the team as a whole that there's a chance, like, the thing is, I don't think he'll be up in the year early enough. To, mm. to win the award. I agree. So it might be tough, but if he can come up like May, June and have a torrid start to his career and may, maybe make the Pirates somewhat relevant, why not? Yeah. Um, that was for me, like looking at it, it, just the way the rules are, like Yamamoto and Jung Ho Lee feel like obvious ones. Um, but I decided not to, I, I'm going to go Jackson Churio. Uh, I think like in terms of like just strictly like guys who haven't played professional, like top level mm. professional baseball yet. I think him, like, again, like, he's a guy, like, if he makes a team. Um, but the, from everything that we've seen, he's a stud. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, that's my guy. They, they gave him basically the Scott Kingery thing, yeah, like, we're yeah, betting yeah. on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Cy Young, I'm going to go American League. Uh, I mean, it, it makes sense to write it down. I'm going Corbin Burns. I think that especially playing with a great infield defense behind him, uh, and the fact that Baltimore is now a pitcher's park in left field, mm-hmm. they moved that wall back. I think that that, you know, per, parlay that with the offensive support he's going to get with Baltimore and the fact that they're going to be a good team. I think it, uh, I think it all lines up. Yeah. I, so I have him as well. Let me just like real quick, try and pick someone else. I don't know that he's the you guy. He, I, he was my, I was, yeah. for me, like it was a toss up. There's a lot of guys like you got Garrett Cole in there, um, potentially Blake Snell, him, a bunch of guys on the, I, so a sleeper I had for that. Cause I have it on my sleeper team was Luis Castillo. Okay. So, because that was... A, Mariners have... Uh, I, I had a future last year on George Kirby as the Cy Young winner. Nice. Uh, it, I couple, mean, it, it went better than I... Th- yeah, because you know, Castillo, Kirby, and Gilbert mm-hmm. were all really good. Which is kind of why I had... sleeper team, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, NL, this is my one bias pick. I am going Zach Wheeler. Uh, nice. I, I think nice. I I'd said it during when I picked him as the team Cy Young. Contract year, same thing. You know, he has a good offense behind him. He's got... I, I'm banking on Trey Turner having a better year at shortstop. Mm-hmm. I also don't think it's crazy to think that at some point in his tenure, him and Stott are going to flip flop. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. you know, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll cross see. that bridge when we get there. But uh, I, I think that Wheeler is going to go out and prove what he's been doing in the playoffs. He has one of the best playoff you know resumes in terms of numbers of all mm-hmm. time. So I, I think that this is the year where Wheeler gets his Cy Young award. Uh, I'm going Spencer Strider. I think this is like he's been just kind of building, building, building. He's added a curveball. Um, uh, you know, like uh, getting like. The stuff with him is self-explanatory. I think this is the year he takes that like final step to be like 
the dude. Yeah, man. no, because the stuff and doesn't always re- relay to uh, results, as we saw. Mm-hmm. His ERA was still cr- around like four last year, so I yeah, think you're right. Yeah. He still has a little more room. Great quads, too. Oh, dude. Incredible. Outrageous. He's got to go back to the mustache, though. I think that's like a yeah. strict condition. I've had conditions on a lot of these. If he goes back to the mustache, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, all right, MVP time. All right. All right, uh, I want you to go first here. What do you have for the American League? I have Corey Seager. Okay. Um, I, series MVP? Yeah, so... I, I don't know. I, I just think very highly of Corey Seager as a player. Um, like, a lot of eye tests, a lot of numbers. You can pull up baseball reference, whatever, and, like, it's got, legit. He's got the dog in him. Yeah, got the dog in him. I, I think he's the best shortstop in baseball right now. Um, and that is a kind of always sliding scale. But uh, right now, I think he is. Uh, he's kind of – he's got the got a couple rings. He's got the contract. Uh, just everything's in – his favor to go out and do this yeah, this year. I like that pick. I do. Uh, especially if the Rangers, you know, don't have that World Series mm-hmm. hangover. They don't have to. Uh, I, I believe it's all picked before the playoffs anyway. Yeah. But as yeah, long as they so, make it, he should yeah. be in the running. Uh, I'm going with Jordan Alvarez. I like that. Because I feel like he's someone who, again, I test. Every time you see him, he hits oh, a ball God, 900 dude, feet. He is a monster. Um, so last year, I have the numbers here. He hit 31 homers, but he missed 50 games. So, you know, <laughs> do, doing that in like 100, 110 games is nuts. Jesus Christ. And I'm banking on the health. His OPS is always high nines to low tens. I think that he's someone who, especially, you know, the Astros are going to be competitive. One note that I had that I think will help a lot is so the two betting favorites right now are Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. I think it could be something where, like the old days with Jeter and A Rod, if the Yankees are the best team, they, they kind of they steal votes, they steal votes from yeah, each other. Yeah. And I think that's something that you have to consider. That if them, you know, if, for example, them and the Astros are the ones and the two seeds, Alvarez it could potentially get a lot of votes. If and I think he's only like twenty seven. He yeah, came on really to the scene pretty early. So I'm I'm kind of banking on the health here from Alvarez, but I like my pick. There. Yeah, that was I like it too. My only thing with, like, I'm always hesitant to go like a DH as a. Because I guess he plays a little bit of left, but I'm always hesitant More to go. More DH. Yeah, I'm always hesitant to go with DH as an MVP. Um, and that is, like, unless their numbers are so far ahead of everyone else. But Jordan Alvarez has more than enough potential to yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. All right. I know. Uh, I have Mookie Betts. Okay. Reasoning? Um, so, kind of the same, like, I don't know. I just, again, like, kind of think he's a stud. Um, the, the, all the eyes are going to be on the Dodgers. And my, I, I kind of under the same reasoning with Shohei, like he's going to be a DH this year. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to be able to outpace Mookie in, enough to get the MVP. Just, and just with like everything Mookie does, uh, they might five be, tool. Yeah, moving yeah. around, they might even like be playing him at second base a little bit this year. weren't they like trying to get yeah. him out? Like oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, I think this is another year where he's just going to do his thing. Um, I did have a sleeper on this one that I want to put Corbin Carroll. If he okay. just like. I don't know. I really liked what he did last year. If he just turns up to another notch, which he might, uh, he could be in that conversation yeah. as well. All right, I'm going with Acuna back to back. I feel like it, obviously it's a very obvious answer, but is if he keeps stealing as many bases as he does, like he's setting records. Like it was the first what, like 40, 70 season yeah, ever. Dude, he's ridiculous. If he if he continues to steal bases at that pace, you know, for uh, top of the division or top of the league team with the power. The defense, it's crazy that, you know, for probably like 29 teams, he's their center fielder. Mm-hmm. But for the Braves, he doesn't have to be. But, yeah, I, I feel like we, we, we cover most of what we got to do yeah, with the MLB. Yeah, so. You know, I feel like most shows, it'll probably start heating up once the high school season's over around like Memorial Day mm-hmm. and like June and stuff when we do more. Honestly, once like stuff with the MLB actually heats up. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always say, like, you don't even have to check the standings until the start of June. Yeah. Like, nothing. Like, the Pirates were like 20 and 8 <laughs> last year. And they, yeah. they make you think. But, um, all right, well, that wraps up another installment of Delco Baseball Now, episode number 48. We're getting close to that big 5-0. I yes, hope sir. it's not the episode we already recorded. Uh, uh, well, I'll try. I'll try. I think it I might can, be. I think I can spread it out a little bit so it doesn't yeah. have to be. But, yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah. We'll but uh, as always, shout out producer Rob here, INR Studios, for hooking us up. It's where we'll be throughout the rest of this season and hopefully uh, hopefully keep it rolling here. Interviews keep going. Yes, sir. We'll be trying to get as many teams in as possible. Uh Toss us some uh, toss us some follows on social media. We got the link tree in all of our bios. Mm-hmm. You can find everything there. Subscribe on YouTube. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.